Hello. Hello. Um, I'm going to start in a few moments, just let you all get settled. Because I'd like to welcome you all to the School for Scandal. <laughs> you say Mr. Snake were all inserted? They were, madam. And as I copied them myself in a feigned hand, there can be no suspicion from whence they came. <laughs> <laughs> Did you circulate the report of Lady Brittle's intrigue with Captain Bostall? That's in as fine a train as your ladyship could wish. In the common course of things, it should reach Mrs. Clackett's ears within four and twenty hours. And then you know the business is as good as done. Why, truly, Mrs. Clackett has a very pretty talent and a great deal of industry. True, madam, and has been tolerably successful in her day. To my knowledge, she has been the cause of six matches being broken off, and three sons disinherited, of four forced elopements, as many close confinements, nine separate maintenances, and two divorces. Nay. I have more than once traced her causing a tete-a-tete -a -tete in the town and country magazine, when the parties perhaps had never seen each other's faces before in the course of their lives. She certainly has talents, but her manner is gross. It is true. She generally designs well, has a free tongue and a bold invention. But her colouring's too dark, and her outline often extravagant. She wants that delicacy of hint and mellowness of sneer which distinguishes your ladyship scandal. Oh, you are partial, Snake. <laughs> Not in the least. Everyone allows that Lady Sneerwell can do more with a word or a look than many can with the most laboured detail, even when they happen to have a little truth on their side to support it. Yes, my dear Snake, and I'm no hypocrite to deny the satisfaction I reap from the success of my efforts. Wounded myself in the early part of my life by the envenomed tongue of slander. Oh. I confess I've since known no pleasure equal to the reducing others to the level of my own injured <coughs> reputation. Nothing could be more natural. But, Lady Sneerwell, there is one affair in which you have recently employed me, wherein, I must confess, I am at a loss to guess your motives. I conceive you mean with respect to my neighbour, Sir Peter Teasel, and his family? I do. Here are two young men to whom Sir Peter has acted as a kind of guardian since their father's death. The elder, 